How's it going, everybody? This is Eddie, and welcome back to episode two of Learning to Program. All right, um, if you remember where we left off, which is for me about a few minutes ago, for you it was maybe twelve hours. I don't know, but um, we had just set up a, an Eclipse plugin uh, that will let us program in Lua, which is the language we will be using, and we printed to the screen. Hello world. Um, and then also my throat just collapsed and I couldn't barely speak anymore. Which, like I said, was a few minutes ago. I got a glass of water here. We'll see how that does for me. But, uh, yeah. I've been sick recently. So, it might happen again. Probably will. Anyways, enough about me. Let's get back to the programming. Uh, so... We now have learned our first, you know, programming concept, printing. In my opinion, well, okay, it, in my opinion, this is, aside from your basic programming logics, logic and that kind of a thing, uh, and, 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 you know, a wow loop and an if statement, which we'll get to soon, uh, printing is the most important thing, um, and that is because you could have a program that does all sorts of crazy things. It could add and multiply and divide numbers and then take the square root and then, you know, uh, throw in some sort of fancy algorithm, do something weird to it. And uh, you might put in the number 5 and expect the number 7 as the output. And it might come back with 9.5, it might come back with negative 7, it might come back with uh, does not compute, uh, you don't know. Uh, and the only way to tell where and how that program is breaking, or the best way to tell besides reading through your code over and over again to find the errors, is to have your program print out what it is thinking, what it is holding in memory, what it is... Uh, what code it is running at what point and what code it isn't running ever or what code it is running in an infinite loop um, the best way to do that is to have it print to the screen information that will tell you that um, I have had the unfortunate experience uh, when I was in school taking classes um, of having for a time for a short period of time having a um, professor who, when we were doing some stuff in web design and JavaScript, uh, mostly, um, who did not tell us how to do that, um, how to print to console, and basically when we had a problem, we were instructed to reread the code. And let me tell you, reading your code is not the way to go. So, uh, anyways, that's a, that's a bit of a tangent. We know how to do a print for words, right? It's pretty simple. We, we just write print. Oh, if I can type right. Put a, some quotes and then enter the words that we want in. Like, uh, I love YouTube in all caps. If we save that and run that now, you can see the first line ran, print hello world, and because it printed hello world, and then it printed I love YouTube in all caps. It's great. Alright, well what if uh, we want to print numbers? Now, there are two ways to do that. <clears throat> oh, here comes the throat thing. Ah, it's like a sip of water. Alright, two ways to do it potential ways to do it. Print. Let's try to print the number 5. Alright. One is with the quotes, one is out without the quotes. One without the quotes is giving me an error. What does that error say? Let's see. Oh. Never mind, there's not two potentials. Um, 
actually, that's a good thing to go over. Hey, come on now. Hmm. Uh, anyways, uh, print five. All right. So that's gonna be an error. You know how I know? This red X. If I hover over it, it gives me some more information about the uh, the error. Um, the best, most useful information is it says line four, character five. So if I zoom in, can I do that? Um. Well, oh, trying to find ways to do it. Doesn't look like I can. Um, hmm. Well, forget it. <coughs> uh, so if I zoom in, we can count over the characters. One, two, three, four, five. No, well, five is the T, not the five. Who knows? Point is, it kind of gives you a ballpark range of where your error is. Um, but that's how we know we can't do it. And the error goes away once we get rid of the problem line. So, uh, I have to save it. Sorry, that's what that little pop-up said. So I saved it and we printed 5, it printed out 5. So anything we put in the quotes following the print statement will be printed. Good to know. Uh, print, hello, alright, next we're going to talk about data types, now what data types are, and they're very easy in Lua, so I think it's all of Lua that does it like this, or is it just the one, I, I don't know, I, I, I might be wrong about this, but for all intents and purposes, there are two two major data types really I don't I don't know I this kind of a thing these kind of the parts of the programming I get mixed up a lot because it it sort of varies from language to language and it sort of doesn't there's like certain terminology that refers to um all overarching programming ideas and certain terminology that refers to just for the language and then some of them bleed through. It's, it's, in my opinion, it's extremely confusing. So we're going to talk about two things in Lua. All right, very simple. Um, we're going to do something that you don't understand right now, and I'll explain it in a second. Numbers and words. Um, I wonder what they're called in Lua, though. <sighs> I'm going to figure that out for you and tell you next episode. In words. Now, what I did there is I did dash dash and I wrote something. Now, if I wrote the word numbers without those dash, dashes, uh, Eclipse, the IDE would change, turn it a different color. Uh, turns it a different color, rather, when I put a dash dash. Um... And if I do it without it, I get an error because I I don't I didn't put the dash dash, which means it thinks I'm writing code, because the dash dash is turns it in turns the following the rest of the line, the rest of what I write in that line, into comments, which are just normal text, just like in Microsoft Word or Notepad or something like that. It's it's just text that is skipped when you run the program or when uh yeah when you run the program. So you can write notes to yourself. You can put dash dash between some other code. So for instance, I could put... Oh, I always do that. Uh, print goodbye. And save that. Oh, bye. <laughs> I don't know why that closed. All right, save that and run it and now it says hello and goodbye if I put a dash dash between good before print goodbye uh, that turns it into a comment which means it's skipped by the code and when I run it it just says hello alright 
uh, pretty simple, I, I hope. But anyway, so I put those. I'm putting these there to make it clearer how this is gonna work because I'm I'm writing some code about numbers right underneath the co numbers comment. I'm kind of using it as little headers for different sections. If they weren't there, the code would be the same. The program would run the same. It doesn't matter. But <clears throat> uh. X, okay. So, I'm going to say, if you remember math class with algebra back in middle school or high school or junior high or whenever you did it, you might remember that X was a pretty common name for a variable, which is simply uh, something that represents something else. Uh, which is not a very descriptive title, and there's probably better ways to put it. But, uh, basically, it is something that uh, you can use in place of, of something else that you may not, might not know yet, or you might be using it in so many different places you want a shorthand for it. Um, but, the simplest way to put it is to show you. So x equals 1. Now, uh, another one we could do is i equals 5, or num equals 120. Okay, so the variable here, the variables here are x, i, and num. The values are 1, 5, and 120. If we did, if we said print x, all right, is that going to give me an issue? It is, isn't it? Well, wait, hold on here. Let me save that. What's the issue? It's been a while since I've done Lua, honestly. Diversity was expected to be a function method call. Um, statement was expected only a function method call expression. As statements. Huh. One second. Oh, interesting. All right. <clears throat> so actually, print, just print. Uh, you need something like this with quotes after it. But if you did print parentheses, and we'll talk about what that means in a future episode. But for right now, we're just going to switch over to actually using um, print with parentheses. So print and then right following the word print, no space, parentheses, and then you could put something in quotes and it would still work. So we still get the same output, but we're going to use that for now. I apologize for using the other print. I'm getting a little bit confused. It's the same thing, just different ways of writing it. It's not the same thing. Uh, it, we'll, we'll talk about it later. But for right now, we'll just know we're going to use these here. Now, I, you'll notice in these, uh, I do not put quotes, and the reason why, oh, this is going to get confusing, I, I really ho wish I had done the parentheses the entire time, um, the reason why I am not putting num, i, or x in quotes is because I don't want to print the letter x, I don't want to print the letter i, I don't want to print the word num, I don't want to print n-u-m, I want to print the value associated with the variable x, the value associated with the variable i, and the value associated with the variable num. So if we run this, 
you will see that x is set to 1, i is set to 5, num is set to 120, and we print x, print i, and print num. So, <coughs> hello is printed because that's printed at the top still. Next, what is printed in the console is 1, which is what x is equal to. Print then 5 and then 120. So what I so that's what we expect. Okay. Next, let's talk uh, let's do some simple math. Um, and if you'll notice, important thing to note, every time we run this, it is simply running down the file from top to bottom, running each line of code. Okay? We're that's gonna change in uh not today, but it's gonna change pretty soon. Um and but just for now, know that. Okay. So uh let's try X. No, uh mm hmm. How are we gonna do this? We let's do this first. Let's print X plus I. Alright, so we remember that x is equal to 5, or uh, sorry, 1 right now, and i is equal to 5. So if you add them together, it'll equal 6, and then we're going to print the result of that. So when you have parentheses, generally what you do is you perform what is inside the parentheses first, and then perform what is outside the parentheses with the result of what was inside the parentheses in place of the parentheses. So you can see we we printed six. That's kind of what we expected. But what if we wanted to save that new value somewhere else, that six, rather than just print it? Well we could do that in a few ways. We could come up with a new one like k equals uh, x plus I I sorry, um, and then you could print K um, or you could overwrite what X already has in it and assign it to something else. So X equals X plus one. Uh, plus I. Um, so let's let's um, let's let's sort things out a bit here. If you just uh, this, I'm actually not 100 sure about this. If you type in print and you put the open and close parentheses, but you don't think anything in it, it might you don't put anything in the parentheses, it might print an empty line. Uh, and we can use that to sort of format our results here. Um, I'm going to add a statement here, print x, and then I'm going to print x again after we say x equals x plus i. And I'm going to show you the difference. Let's run this. Yeah, that kind of spaced things out a little bit better. So. Uh, all right, we have uh, printing out xi and num, one five one twenty, perfect. Uh, then we print out x plus i, which is six, and then we say k equals x plus i, and uh, then printing k, which is also six. So that those are two different ways to to print out the uh, result of adding x and i together. Um, and then we print a uh, line, right? And then we print out x. So x, we've been doing lots of math to x, right? We have added i multiple times to x, right? But it doesn't change what x is, okay? So when you have um, five rocks in your hand, 
and you add two more to your hand. You have seven rocks in your hand. Okay. So you can kind of think of merging them together. That's not how this works. That's this this is not how that works. Um when you do x plus i <clears throat> you don't merge them together nothing those numbers don't change they don't add together it takes those two values x and i which in this case are one and five and it combines them together and puts that number somewhere else it returns the correct term is it returns that number meaning in this case it prints it in uh, this case, it puts it to, it assigns it to k, the variable k, or the reference k. Uh, in down here, we assign it to x again. So, any time we say x, we're we are referring again to this x that we created up here that's at equal to one. So when we say x plus i x equals x plus i rather now we are changing x to the new values I'm not sure if that's making sense I don't think I explained that well enough but I hope you kind of understand um, so then so we can see here we printed out x we said x equal to x plus i we print out x again so the first time x is equal to 1 then you add i to it remember i is equal to 5 we print out x again, now x is 6. Alright, I think that's good for the math. Now, we only did addition. Um, so, just to show you. 10 minus 2. Print 10 divided by 2. And print 10 multiplied by 2. Okay, and let's throw another empty print right there to fill out an empty space. Uh, so we have 8, 5, and 20, just like we would expect right down here. We're all set. Um, that is going to be it for today, because I've gone on for quite a while here about the numbers and the printing. I got off on a bit of a few, few little tangents there. Um, but this is how you deal with numbers. There are a couple other operators that we might need, like square root or absolute value or something. And those are a bit more complicated, so we will have to do a little background research into those if and when we need them. For right now, we don't. Uh, but this is basic math. Next, we're going to get into dealing with some words. Uh, that shouldn't take too long. And we might next time be able to get into if statements. And, uh, yeah, that will be interesting. That will, uh, that's getting closer to being able to actually build some applications. And then from there, we'll go into while loops. And fun fact, while loop, theoretically, if you only had a while loop and if statements, I think is the way it goes you could technically write any computer program out there. It would be inefficient, and it would be slow, and it would take forever to run up, but, and it would be a pain in the butt to write, but theoretically, it could take, you could write anything. At least that's what I've been told. I've, but, uh, yeah, that, that'll be a blast when we get there. Hang in there, guys, it's, it's boring for a while, but it's, it's important stuff that you need to remember that everything boils down to these fundamentals. And, uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys later.